For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. Hey, uh, Craig, it's always good to be back in Dunkin' Donuts this time of year. Do you know what makes Dunkin' Donuts awesome in the fall? What makes Dunkin' Donuts awesome in the fall, Russ? Pumpkin. Pumpkin, pumpkin. makes Dunkin' Donuts. It's the pumpkin. Wait, is that Eric Summer over there ordering a donut? Are there I, any I, I, that aren't pumpkin spice? <laughs> <laughs> it's that any voice. It's amazing. Eric, oh, how are you, I, sir? How, I, and I, I'm I, with him with the pumpkin. Anything but. No, how can you be, how can you be um, hating on the pumpkin, Eric? It, it, you know, I'm fine with a little bit of pumpkin. I think it's just getting ridiculous how much pumpkin there is everywhere. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Here in New England, regular donut. There's a lot of pumpkin. All right, a regular do- now, Eric. When it's not pumpkin season, what is your favorite donut? Uh, I go for the cream filled, the Bavarian or Boston filled cream donut. Yeah. yeah. Well, that well, is my yeah. donut du jour. Yeah, being a New Englander, I know you're from Connecticut. We'll just say you chose Boston cream also and just leave it at that. We, sure. We've been trying to explain <clears throat> to the Canadian guests on this show occasionally that um, it is not a, um, as they like to call it, cream-filled chocolate-covered donut. It is a Boston cream donut. And so we're, we're, just, we're just evangelizing just proper be, naming just conventions. Just don't be ridiculous. Yeah, let's, you know? let's, be, let's be simple. I mean, international. So, <laughs> incident. so, Eric, you know, I don't know, since you're here, and, and can I buy yeah. your coffee? What, what do you like in your coffee? Just plain? That's cream. Uh, let, let me get a uh, cream and two sugars. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, what, one thing that came up. Uh, it was good to see you, by the way, at Gen Con. That was an awesome time. Yeah. Right? I wish we got to spend more oh, time together. Oh, that was together. an epic Gen Con, wasn't it? It was. It was a good year this year. We had a lot of fun. Epic. But one thing that came up at both the Dice Tower epic event. I don't know how Mega to describe. Event. What do you, What do you, do you oh, guys call that thing this year? Because it was the biggest ever, right? It was huge. It was... We we called it our our live. Uh, I don't know. Dice Tower live. Mm-hmm. adventure but this was the first time we were in the big ballroom right the, the mate the 500 ballroom at the uh, convention center in previous years we'd been stuck in various rooms in in various hotels getting bigger each year uh but this is the first time that gen con said okay i guess you can go for the big room and this one had uh like security <laughs> it had uh, a queue line right. where people lined up before the show while we were still setting up and there were the late they got the line in there and and you follow these the back and forth, switchback, turnstile things. Um, there was a, a dedicated sound crew, a dedicated light crew. It was, it was nuts, and it and it fit. I think a thousand people, and it was almost full. I was I was there in the back, and I was like overwhelmed by the fact that it was full. It was amazing. This was for those familiar with Gen Con in the past. This is like the former home of Tracy Hickman's Killer Breakfast. Like it was this big giant. Oh really? Yeah, that's where it was. That exact oh, wow. spot. Wow, that's it was, huge. Yeah, room. right. Uh, same, it is gigantic with same video stage? screens. I yeah. mean, this is the first time we've ever had a, a camera. It was awesome. focusing on us with video screens on either side. It. It was mind blowingly epic. It was, and, it was and we nearly filled the room. It was crazy, yeah, yeah. It, and it was, and it prompted. It was cool, and thank you um, to both you and Tom for for uh, allowing us to participate. So several members of the Dice Tower Network got to jump on stage and do some silly stuff with you guys. It was awesome. Yeah, um, but one thing that came up during your event, and that also came up in a, in a much smaller. Uh, we would like to think of it as more of like you know more of a town <laughs> hall. <laughs> We like, we like it's to stay intimate. Yeah, like, yeah, we like to stay, you know, intimate, gathering, intimate yeah. close to the listeners, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, we, we, it was, that was amazing. You guys, it was so cool to see uh, you guys having that kind of uh, event. It was, it was awesome. But one thing that came up both these things was the question about, um, you know, um, what's it like to go to a convention now as sort of someone who does these podcasts that a lot of people listen to. Does it mm-hmm. change your convention experience? Do you find yourself not enjoying it as much? Of that stuff, and I thought it might be fun for us to. A, answer that question, because if a couple people ask us it, then probably a lot of people wonder. But then B, kind of talk maybe about what's it like for these, what do we do at these conventions that maybe most people don't because of what we do, if that makes sense. So, right. so Eric, what was your answer to that question about, like, how has it changed your, your Gen Con experience? Well, it, it, it is, first, very different than, than it has been. I mean, when I first went to Gen Con, we, we didn't have a booth. Um, we, we just sort of wandered around and, and mm-hmm. just took it all in, and we, we would grab a space somewhere and record a podcast in the corner. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Um, and so it, it felt much more like a regular attendee mm-hmm. uh, experience the first couple of times that I went. 
And and then as we started getting booth space and started acquiring press badges um, and then later exhibitor badges, and it, and it became much more of a scheduled, regimented mm-hmm. event. Um, and, but as far as, you know, being a, a nano celebrity or a micro celebrity <laughs> at, at, at one of these, uh, it, it's it's great. It's it's exhilarating. You get to meet people that ordinarily, I mean, right now, three of us are talking into a Skype conversation, <laughs> right? And right. we're just having, yeah. we're just talking. But eventually, people are going to hear this, mm. um, and and we actually we get to make a a. It's a little terrifying. It, <laughs> we get to make a personal connection with each of those listeners. Hey, you in the car. Or walking your dog, or right. listening with your kids, or riding your bike down the Italian hop, uh, <laughs> uh, pathway. Right. I'm yeah. your buddy St- right now, talking to you in your ears. Mm-hmm. Um, we get to make that connection, and we don't actually get to make that personal, um, and, and make it a two way street until we get to go to one of these events and have someone come up to us and say, "You keep me from falling asleep mm-hmm. on my mm-hmm. commute every morning." Right. Or. Or you and you have gotten me into the hobby with my kids because they listen to you guys talk and they like listening to you guys talk. And then at the same time, we get to hear about games that we can play as a family. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting that kind of feedback is awesome. And, and what we often talk about is that feedback sometimes comes when you're in a hurry and trying to get from place to place. Mm-hmm. And especially at Gen Con, moving from place to place is its own game. Right. right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it can sometimes slow you down. Um, but that's, and that's such a minor thing. To be able to get that feedback, and as these micro-celebrities or booth owners or uh, press badge holders, to get access to things that we wouldn't or- ordinarily get access to is also a huge plus. Um, yeah. So I'm willing to, to give you know, the occasional handshake or getting stopped in the hallway while you're carrying a bunch of games from one place to another. That's fine. Please come up, say hi. We totally appreciate it. Yeah. And, and that's one of the highlights of going to these places. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's exact. It makes it so um, – it's neat. And this year was really weird for me in particular because it was the first time people – normally people don't recognize me by sight. Because mm. because I we don't we don't do any video. The only video we've done is on our Patreon page. And thank you, Patreon listeners. You're the ones listening to this. This is a lost chapter. Clearly. But uh, yeah. but um, but I had quite a few people this year because I don't know if just more people are using Patreon or the video has been around long enough. People have seen it or whatever coming up to me and saying, "Hey, Russ, good to see you. Good to meet you. I love your show." And yeah. without and I wasn't wearing this year. I wasn't wearing my as Craig calls it the uniform. We weren't wearing our jerseys we i was just i had a badge right. it didn't say anything noticeable on it um i had actually run out of patches and so i got quite a more stops that time and it's very as you said eric it's very flattering it's it's never i never it doesn't feel intrusive or a bother at all i'm so flattered mm-hmm. that we um that we have that impact on people and that people care mm-hmm. enough to listen to us it's just i still i never get that i never get surprised by that if that makes sense I I get surprised by it all the time, I mean, and I get yeah, very I humbled by it. That's what I meant to say. I meant I never get. Yeah, that's. I, I never stop getting surprised by that. Is the way I should have said. That. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I find it so odd that anyone would would that a listen to us anyway, and then b <laughs> listening to us feel motivated to approach us and thank us for what we're doing because it kind of. I mean, you guys know it feels like you're doing this in a vacuum when we're exactly as Eric said. We're you know sitting talking into our mics, looking at the computer, and right. there's so, almost a disconnect that there are people listening, and then not only that, but there are people listening who are, for some inexplicable reason, enjoying what they're listening to. And <laughs> How then dare you have these, this? Like, that's bizarre. That's, I didn't say, like, I'm not take offended by it. I just, it's confusing <laughs> to me. I mean, I have to listen to Russ. He's my right. friend. You right. guys, you, you have to, like, <laughs> seek us out. Right. And um, and it's just it, it that in and of itself is humbling. But I have to say the 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 most humbling are always the people who come to us. And I think I can't. One of you guys had just said it like th- when they thank you for help getting through a particularly difficult event or time period. And and what else can you do? But I mean, you're welcome. And it's just it's it's almost it's almost I don't know. Uh, I'm uncomfortable not because you approached me, but because I, I it's alien to me that i might have helped you and it's it's and it's i don't know i keep using the word humbling but i don't even think that really approaches it it's um 
it's touching in a way that 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 I I'm having a hard time articulating that that the that there are people that we have helped you know I mean and I'm not like I, I have a bunch of people I think might be ro- this is how my brain works you're all rolling your eyes going oh my god they think they've helped every uh, it's not as you every now and then you just get approached by someone and it's really touching so yeah, I would echo what you two have just said in that it doesn't bother me in the slightest when people mm-hmm. come up and 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 say hey and, and ask for a picture which is still bizarre to me because i know i'm ugly but uh i'm no <laughs> eric summer come on <laughs> man's got a face to match his voice really and yeah uh, but i'm no rodney there's... smith seriously that, <laughs> guy, that guy is oh, a hottie man yeah it's mm. uh, it's 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 <laughs> Ow, burn. Anyway, exactly. Um, that chin. Oh, I know, right? Chiseled. <laughs> Chiseled's the word you want to look for. That chiseled jaw, yeah. I believe. Is what and, um, but, yeah. and, and I love it when I have stuff, like, even if it's just a button or a patch, and I and I, I, I feel like I'm, it's strange to me that I'm like, want a, want, a, want a button? And people are like, oh, my God, that's great. And then I run out, and I feel, I, I apologize to everyone. I'm so sorry. I don't have anything to give you. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like we didn't approach you to get something. We just wanted to say thanks and hello. But um, it's great. And then to go back on to what Eric was saying about the access that we get and our experience at Gen Con, I think, is probably not just because we may or may not get recognized, but 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 for all these other ancillary things that come with what we do is very different, I think, than what a lot of other people's Gen Cons feel like. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. what? What do so you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, Take that and run with it, or just segue, let me Craig. leave me leave no. me hanging? That's fine. So too. we'll leave you hanging. Yeah. Well, you know, lest lest <laughs> this all be positive, there are a couple of drawbacks. Yeah. Um, I, I do oh, feel yeah. like I talked about how scheduling has become more and more uh, uh, solid. You know, it's becomes yeah. more and more yeah. of a busy event, especially once you have a booth to deal with. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. My my free time to just go out and play stuff. Uh, has certainly been diminished. Again, we're talking about Gen Con as an example. Yes. But I used to get tickets to the Pick Up and Play Library. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, th- this is the room that's that's run by the the board game group in Indianapolis, and they right. have a library, and it's just a it's it's essentially like the boardroom at Origins. Right. Uh, you know, you can go there and and play something, and I would get tickets for most of the time slots, or at least all of the evenings, I think. Mm-hmm. And one year I did that, and I didn't use any of them mm. because I was always mm. busy with, with an event at night or a, a dinner or um, a, a, a demo session somewhere, and I never even entered the room. And I sort of realized that that was the turning point, that my free time to play games has been severely limited by all of the, just all of the stuff, all the scheduled events that come with having a larger presence at this convention. And uh, and I, I miss that a little bit. I yeah. mean, I still try and jump away from the booth when I'm not scheduled to be there. Try and get some demos in the hall, mm-hmm. but it's a lot harder for me to get table time yeah. during Gen Con, at, at, at least compared to something like BGG Con or Dice Tower Con, where I do have more free time and can actually play something with a little more heft than a 30, 45 minute demo. Yeah, yeah. So, Chem changed Absolutely me like that too a little bit. Like I I used to go to Gen Con as a shared experience with my local friends, right? So mm-hmm. I would go to Gen Con. Many other gamers from our gaming group would go to Gen Con. And the day we'd all split up and do our thing, maybe meet for lunch. And then the evenings we'd all get together in some room and play whatever loot we, we had managed to purchase that day and, and talk about things we saw, what was cool about it. And it was very much... Um, but as the show grew and Gen Con became more of an event that you know, Craig and I are plugged into as part of the show, in addition to our passion for gaming... Um, it started turning into more as a place to one spend time with those we don't see regularly. So, so listeners mm-hmm. who who become friends, or people like in in, in other podcasters who become friends, uh, and and we want to meet with those people and play games with them because we, we don't see them very often. Um, and so our time gets booked, as you say, Eric, either either focused on supporting the show or the events around the show or getting access to interviews with with people in the industry and that kind of thing, or demoing new games because we want to cover it for the show or playing that one game we can squeeze in with, you know, um, someone from the, from, um, that we know. And all of a sudden I realize I'm making the conscious decision. Well, I can play with my friends back at home. So I will mm. not share this experience with them any longer. And, and as you said, the new stuff is really cool and it's definitely amazing uh, and very gratifying to meet, you know, 
you know, the, the friends you see once a year or, or twice a year at a convention or something and get to reconnect with them. But at the same time, it's a different experience. And I do, you know, look back fondly on those times that, that don't really happen anymore for me. So there is, right. you know, the time it, it has evolved for me, uh, still good, but just different. If that makes sense. Mm. Right. And, uh, I mean, the more stuff that I've done in the gaming industry, I find myself having to plug in, um, networking time and mm-hmm. which, mm-hmm. which sounds interesting. I mean, w- which sounds dull and boring, what generally means I'm out drinking, <laughs> with with, di- with different groups of people who all for some sure. reason have their meetings around a bar but um but it's that funny I mean, how that that's works awesome. out, it? It, it's yeah. weird isn't it it always is weird and then you're always curious like i'm well i was invited here but when should i be picking up a round and then they never let you pick up a round it's ingrained <sighs> um it, it, it's insane is what i meant to say not ingrained I don't know what that. Well, it's ingrained, it's ingrained in drinking beer. It's ingrained right. in me to need to try. Right. Um, <laughs> but that. But at the same time, that that usually occurs when I used to be playing games with our friends. You know, after dinner when the hall closed, and mm-hmm. and so by the time I'm done, if you look at, you know, I tried to get into the hall early because that's really I love my favorite part of Gen Con, bar none, without any other, with nothing is like the, the the hour, half hour, whatever you can get before the hall opens Ooh. in the hall, just walking around. It's almost empty. It's cavernous. But at the same time, it's huge. You see it coming to life and you see all the people with their coffees slowly moving towards their booths and yes. coming alive. And, and, you know, I mean, and, and I might pick up one little thing here or there, but I don't even go there to, to, to cherry pick the, you know, the next big thing. I just kind of like, I just love the, en- the building energy and just mm. the quiet, because the rest of the weekend, it ain't like that. And you can no. feel the, the change in air pressure when they open the doors is insane. So that that aspect of it is great. But so if I, I go there at the beginning, and then, like you said, Eric, I, I'm trying to do demos and go and see, the, see all the new stuff so I can report on it. But at the same time, I, there are things I want to play, and I want to look at terrain and blah, blah, blah. Right. And then I've got these other meetings that I'm going to, and I'm just like hang out with these guys for a while because they're doing some cool stuff for us. And I'm hanging out with these guys for a while because they might want some writing done. And the next thing you know, usually it's, oh, everybody's going to dinner. And I'm like, oh, I can't make dinner. I got to like stay around here because at seven o'clock I'm meeting this guy to demo this new cool game. And so mm-hmm. it's like all these things. And then I'm like 10 o'clock at night. I'm if I'm lucky, 10 o'clock at night, I'm heading back to the hotel because I'm exhausted. But it's an yeah. awesome experience that I love. But it's totally different, as you guys both said, than it used to be. Eric, what's it? How has it changed? Um we get to experience this a little bit ancillary, but um, you know how how has it changed for you now that the Dice Tower has a dedicated booth that you help you know set up and man you know we we help a little in a very small way we're there for like you know right. one or, one or two shifts over the course of the weekend but you're you're involved in setting setting it up getting engaged being in the vendor hall when people are setting things up how has that changed the experience for you? Well, I mean, one thing, the reason for getting the booth to begin with, I think, came from getting more access to that hall. Craig, Mm -hmm. you you talked about the excitement and the ability to talk to people in that early hour before things actually open. And that's one of the best times to to have interviews, to do Mm -hmm. networking, to actually walk around and talk to people because they're not trying to sell games yet. Right. Uh, Exactly. They're they're just they're doing some setup. You, You can try and stay out of the way for that. But. Gen Con is sort of an odd duck because they're um, the way they they present the media badges. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have a press badge to Gen Con, you get access with the VIGs right. on the first day on that Thursday right. morning. You get to come in with them. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to buy anything. They're very nope. clear about that. Yes. Um, and you, but you have at that point access. To actually, I think did they, did they let the press in an hour before the VIGs? No, or it's it's the same time don't. as the VIGs. No, yeah, you get in with the VIGs. You so do. even that isn't very useful because no. the popular booths are selling to the VIGs. Right. Um. Right. And so that early access doesn't really exist at Gen Con. And we found at one point that getting an exhibitor badge, and mm. we got right. one through our uh, our cool stuff Inc. partners, mm. was a whole lot better mm. uh, than. Than, than using a press badge because we got in one the day before. Mm-hmm. We got in Wednesday because everyone's setting up their booths and the right. exhibitors need to be in there. So we could talk to people as they were setting up their booths before there was even any selling going on. Right. And then we got in an hour early every day, including mm-hmm. an hour before the VIGs showed up. 
Right. And so we were able to move a lot more efficiently, talk to a lot more people. That it's sort of the the hidden. Now that I'm talking about it, <laughs> only you Patreon listeners know this. <laughs> right. But um. <laughs> The, the exhibitor badge is far more useful for a content yes. provider like us because the press badge really doesn't do much at Gen Con. Yeah. At Origins, it's great. At BGG Con, it's great. Yeah. At, you, know, you, you can get in. Actually, BGG Con, I don't think, has an early access either. <clears throat> Origins, it's great. Um, it lets you in early. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, and that I just I made the day. same discovery this year. Actually, I got a I got a vendor badge instead of the press badge because we were unable to get press badges for some reason this year. And you're absolutely right. And that's what I meant. Like that quiet time when when like there's the VIGs are only there for that first day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the rest of the time you've got like that 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 nice quiet before, calm before the storm thing. Yeah. Gen Con does a weird thing with their press badges. I, I don't want to be negative to them, but they this is something they could definitely improve. Which is, um, they don't, and they've never done this in a way that makes any sense to me. So when you apply for a press badge, um, they finally got it all automated a few years ago. So that process is pretty straightforward. And once you've had it, they generally reissue it to you every year. Uh, as it, long as you continue to talk about Gen Con, I have heard right. anecdotally well, what, that some people did not get their press badge because they didn't tweet enough. Uh, what happened to us, I'll tell you exactly what happened to us. So we, we were denied this year, and and they sent us an email saying we're denied. And I, I said, how can that be? We have over like 20 hours of Gen Con content you know, over the past whatever many years mm. we've been doing this. And you she didn't said, hashtag it, did you? Well, no, what she did was she went to our site and searched it, but she searched for Gen Space Con, and we put all of our content Gen Con one word. <laughs> oh, no. And so I responded to her and I said, "Hey, here it is." She goes, "Oh yeah, I found all that. I'll take care of it for you." And they never did. But 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 the, but the real thing that's even when they do take care of it, the weird thing about Gen Con's press badge is they don't mail them out. So you got to go to this room yeah. to pick up your badge. You can only do this at seven a.m. on the Thursday, the day of, of it opens, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. then only the first like one hundred people in the press line get a little ticket which lets you get in early so yeah. everybody the press badge does not get early access wow and then and so you have to be first 100 so you got to be a crack of dawn to get this thing they yeah. won't mail it out to you for some reason that's inexplicable so you got to go to this room and um, it's a fight you've got like one and, guy who's and then, like holding the space for like 10 of his blogger you, friends you also really? and you also oh, yeah. don't get to cut the vag line so now you're in the vag line which by the way now is huge so right, right. and you're not at the front of it because you've been waiting in line to get your press badge so now right. You're waiting in the early access line, but it takes probably about 15, 20 minutes for the early access line to get in. So wow. you've lost 20 minutes of your early access. And as you say, Eric, once you're in there, it's already a mob it's scene. Already a mob scene. Right. So there's really no, it wasn't, we just found it wasn't worth fighting for. Yeah. Um, and then now what also true press usually has connections with somebody in the industry who's willing to help you out with a, with a, with a, you know, exhibitor yes. badge. So that's how we're, we're doing it now, but it's unfortunate because. Um, not only do other gaming conventions doing it better, but my, my wife actually is an automotive journalist and she goes to all the automotive shows and everything. And in most places, the press is treated much differently. Usually it's mailed to you. Um, mm-hmm. Usually you know, they vet you more. Also, the other thing that's weird at Gen Con is they don't really um, vet carefully. So while they're doing all this vetting for previous ones, people who've never covered Gen Con before or brand new can walk right up, fill out a paper and get a right. press bat immediately. So meanwhile, right. people have been in the industry for like you know eight, ten years are denied because of a hashtag error. Right. Brand new, untested media is going through getting badges, and, you know, it's, it's just, they they could really rethink that it's, a little. It is, yeah, it's <laughs> tricky. Have you, are you at all familiar with the way they do things at Essen? No, no, how know. is Essen? Uh, I mean, I, I know it, it's still difficult to get a number of press badges. I know mm. our, our friends at the Spiel have had trouble getting their entire crew in with yeah. press badges. They've had to go the exhibitor route as well, just mm-hmm. to fill out their roster, but one thing that is amazing that I wish everyone else did is on Wednesday, this is the day before the convention opens, there is a press day oh, in see? which all of, I mean, not all of them, but a number of the publishers go into an upper room, set up their games all next to each other. Oh, so it's awesome. like one table oh, will have cool. three different games on it. Yeah. And you just work your way down the line. They've got reps from the companies. You can take all the pictures and video you want. You can ask questions. You can get flyers. You can get all sorts of information. It's like it's like doing the entire exhibit hall in one swoop. See, right? that's awesome. And, and, that's awesome. And, and so you get all your pictures. You get all your tweets out. You get all this coverage early, yeah. fast. And, and then, then you can just spend time getting the other stuff. Yeah. You've already done like a third right. of the hall as far as new releases go. Right. 
because you've gone to this event and, and it gives you the access and you get to ask the questions and everything that you want to do in that first hour in all these other conventions, except mm-hmm. you did it the day before. Right. I that's think it's fantastic. That's brilliant. And I don't, yeah. and I think that would be good for Gen Con. I, I kind of get the feeling the reason Gen Con controls the amount of press early access is they don't want press buying the games out from under the VIGs. I, I and, agree. Right. And, yeah. and, and the, the easy solution to that is is don't sell them to the press badges, although I've also seen people well, so, with early access badges that then bought a regular badge, too, and they right. flip oh. them over. They flip oh. them over. So, but, but the way you solve that is, is the solution that Essen has, because now you have a pre-day press event that nothing's for sale at. Right, you can't buy anything. And, yep. Right, and, the, and, and I think you have no problem getting the vendors to participate because they're getting to promote their stuff to the press directly. Sure. Um, and I think the press would love it. True press would love it because they get the cover stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that'd be fantastic. And then it frees you up for right. the rest of the time. Yeah. You, you've already covered the major releases. Right. You can find those diamonds in the rough. You can yeah. demo some things that you saw earlier. Yeah. You can actually it. cover the convention instead of just running from booth to booth, getting as many pictures. They and also videos. do right. that. Yeah. Yeah. They also do that. We should write a letter. <laughs> That's oh, a great yeah. Because yes. they've so far been so responsive to yeah, our letters. Well, you know. <laughs> It's uh, it's true. Uh, so, but the flip side to getting this early access with an exhibitor badge is mm. that you gotta you gotta staff the darn booth. Well, that's the thing, and the reason I think the conventions like this solution is because they make money off all the booths. So it's sure. not really they don't mind because you get X number of badges for your booth. You pay a certain amount of you know thousands of dollars for your booth, and so everybody's happy <clears throat> yes. theoretically. Um, so how is how how do you guys handle the? I know you reach out to the network, but. But how has this booth staffing been going for you guys? How do you how do you like the experience of running a booth for the weekend? Well, for one, I mean, actually being there and running it is great because it gives everybody one spot that they can find us. Right. And what we've tried to do is be so like the the major players, to for lack of a better term, uh, Tom, me, Sam, and Z, and sometimes right. Jason, um, will be in the booth for the first hour and the last hour of the day, mm-hmm. so that if somebody really wants to see all of us at once mm-hmm. or see that one guy that they haven't been able to see all convention, they right. know they'll be there during those two hours of the day. Right. Um, awesome. And then we sort of stagger the schedule and try and make it so that one guy's not there for four hours and while somebody else gets to go play three or four demos in a row. <laughs> right. Uh, and then during our free time, when we're not on the schedule, that's when we run out and get food and run out and, and check out some games, do our shopping, that sort of thing. Right. Um, and and it, we try and make it as, as fair as possible. But it does mean that when we do get a break, it's only usually for about two, maybe three hours at a time. Right. And that's not – three hours is good. But if we only have a one- or two-hour break, that's not yeah, really enough not time enough. to run back to the hotel room right. and take a nap. Right. Or, or go play a game of uh, Through the Ages in the board game room. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you can't do that. Uh, or or so, even some demos. Some demos are an hour, so you're getting one exactly. demo in and back to the booth. You know? yeah. Exactly. And, and most yeah. of this past Gen Con, most of it was I'd run out and do some shopping, right. and on my way back, weave around, take some pictures, mm-hmm. and see one game that I, an open seat was there and look at my watch. Yep, I've got enough time to sit down and play this one. Right. And then as soon as it's over, i got a dash. Yeah. Yeah, well, but I, but I think I, you know, and and I think it's important to we stress. I know we started off with all you know sunshine and rainbows, and I think really in the end it is still sunshine and rainbows for me. I mean, I leave Gen Con mm. still feeling fully energized, re excited to do the show because I've just reconnected with so many listeners, and you mm. it just reinforces the size of the industry, the passion in the industry, and the passion of our listeners. Um, and and it's it's also great to reconnect with other with other you know. Um, podcasters too to see yeah. all the energy they're doing and and how they're how they're succeeding and and to know it's i mean what's really cool about podcasting at this point is we're all kind of there's friendly friendly rivalries but in the end we're all <laughs> we're all you know we're all friends and, and rooting for each other to succeed and so it's sure it's it's a very um you know it's it's it, there's a lot of camaraderie there and it's so much fun to share and to see the success and it was so awesome to see you guys uh in that major venue there where before the only people ever seen like that were like major you know sci fi authors and stuff. So to see yeah, a, a it's podcast, crazy to be in the big room. It was awesome. It was such a such a great. Uh, I think it was a shared sense of success. By I know you guys felt very proud, rightly so. But it was a very shared sense of success. I think for everybody uh, in the audience as well. It was just so amazing. I speak more as an audience member and a longtime fan of the Dice Tower, unless as a member of the network. But um, it was just so cool to see that that level of. Uh, where you guys have gotten, Eric, and it was just amazing. So that was it. Was, it was very validating because yeah. I think Gen Con was sort of yeah, all right. Well, 
fine. We'll put you in right. the big room, but I don't. Right. I don't think you're going to do all that. The, the, I mean, yeah. the, there was an expectation that we weren't going to sell out. Right. We weren't going to fill the room, and I, I think we definitely. I don't know where else they could put us other than no. That it was. I mean, if there years. was if there was empty seats, it was like sporadic, like one over yeah. here, one over there. It was the, that room was full. Um, and I got to think some people were turned away, and there were people standing in the back because they didn't want to try to fight their way to find that one seat. You know? Oh so, yeah, I mean, I uh, I was told it was a twelve hundred seat room, and yeah. and we counted tickets. And with adding the few people who were involved in the show, it was a thousand people. In that awesome! Room. That's Jeez. fantastic. Uh, it's so yeah, good. crazy. Awesome. Well, Eric, it was so great to reconnect with you here at Dunkin' Donuts. I hope you had a chance mm-hmm. to finish your coffee before it got cold there. Uh, I did. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Did. Yeah. It's good stuff. Good. Good. Great. Well, Eric, thanks again for catching up with us here, and we'll talk to you on the main show here in about a week. Oh, on the big Sounds shoe. Good to me. The big shoe. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow.